how will the 30% sales tax, how will it be distributed? Hannah Burhani just started studying economics this year at her public high school in Lawrenceville, Georgia. I didn't get to really experience economics until I took econ just this year. So then when I got in, I was like, wait, why does, why do I kind of like this? And then when she recommended me to like join like, you know, this national econ thing, I was like, I'm so excited. Hana, like thousands of students across the country, joined a team to prepare for the National Economics Challenge. You could go to like New York for like an all paid like trip. And I was like, yeah, that's a dream. Like that's the top of the top. This spring, Hannah and 48 other students from California to Connecticut were flown to the Big Apple. 12 teams of four students went from winning their state championships to qualifying for the final round. Their secret? Of course, lots of preparation, but also building a cohesive team. I've never seen like the power of teamwork. I'm like, oh my God, like our brain power is insane. It's the day one semifinals, the critical thinking round. All teams are given a complicated economic problem and just 30 minutes to prepare a presentation for the judging. So today we're gonna to be talking about analyzing the universal sales tax. This will cause a regressive sales tax. This would also create less tax loopholes. That goes beyond book smarts. Now let's talk about government spending. That is putting these kids to the test. Our federal jobs guarantee will uh, put less of a burden on the already fragile U.S. economy. A grueling and thrilling day, capped by a private cruise around Manhattan. We saw the Statue of Liberty up close, lit up in the middle of the night. It was beautiful. And the skyline is wonderful. Sky yeah. Our top four teams. And on the cruise, the top eight teams are announced. Hamilton High School. And it's on to day two, the Quiz Bowl final rounds. We have groups of students that are all over the building. They're talking economics, they're talking strategy, they're nervous, they're excited. It's a bit nerve wracking, certainly, to be here. TV cameras point out your face. Hannah was one of two students invited on CNBC's Squawk Box to promote the finals. Hannah, what would be the best open market operation to reduce inflation? Sell bonds. Beautiful. The finals are broadcast live on CNBC. Here we go, let's play the National Economic Challenge. Two competitions. First, the David Ricardo division. Total revenue increases. The free rider problem. Yes, because it is above ABC. With teams showing that even with a little official economic instruction, they can strut their economic stuff. This year's David Ricardo Champion School. Congratulations to Mount Hubbard High School. We haven't taken any economic classes. This is all self-taught, self-studied by us and a few seniors that's helped us out along seniors. the way. And what is the effect on total revenues? Then came the Adam Smith Division Finals, the pinnacle of high school economic competitions. Inelastic total, total revenue, revenue increases. All responses are correct. This year's National Economics Champions, Indiana's Carmel High School. We won the Econ Challenge! We're just a fun crew and it's really fun to work together. Economics should be fun and should be really interesting because it's a whole way of looking at the world. Ultimately, all of these competitors won something much better than a trophy. It was a lot of fun getting together as a team. It makes you look at the world a different way. It's kind of a field to make money, but it's not really what that's about. It's about using our knowledge to make the world a better place. And after like this whole experience, I realized I'm really passionate about business and econ. So it's like honestly yeah. been a dream for me. Keep watching the Council for Economic Education's website for details on how to apply to next year's National Economics Challenge.